all about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, so where are you born and raised? I was born and raised in uh, Charleston, West Virginia. Charleston, West Virginia. And talk yes. to me a little bit about that. Was there a big music scene there? Uh, absolutely not. So the, <laughs> only thing, the only thing, so I was born uh, in Charleston, but um, that because that's where the nearest hospital was. Uh, so but then I was taken back to the mountain in uh, Falling Rock, West Virginia. So I was uh, born and raised out there uh, in the hills with, you know, chicken coops and, and hound dogs and things like that. So I was okay. raised up you know, drinking spring water um, out the well, you know. At the well? Yeah. <laughs> I was raised well, drinking yeah. spring water out the hose. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It wasn't that easy for us. We had to, like, throw <laughs> pipes to the the well water in the mountains. So, was, you know, but, you know, eventually, like I said, I mean, I, I got out and, and uh, you know, found my way and, um, you know, into the music scene. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I started. There was absolutely no music scene in West Virginia uh, at okay. all. Just church, church music, watching my grandfather uh, play guitar and, you know, my dad oh. played guitar too. So that's, that's, that's pretty much where it was, you know, singing in church and things like that. So. Very cool. Both, yeah. both your grandfather and, and father played guitar. Did, is that uh, what you fell into first? Yeah. So yeah, was, the guitar is more where I, you know, my, when I was younger, um, my dad would play songs for my sister and I to go to sleep and, um, Wow. Uh, the lights would be off and I'd be so amazed like how are you playing this without looking at it you know it was just like it, it, like wow and that's what really intrigued me I, that's that's what I really felt the first time how I wanted to play an instrument was you know it, it was just so fascinating that he was playing something without looking at it in the dark you know so that <laughs> I was like 10 years old like whoa <laughs> you know like how did you do this so but yeah it's not like I can do it easily in the dark. And he's like, Oh, okay. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Was he like a weekend warrior in a band or anything? Or was he actually, I mean, did he do it professionally or is it just kind of a hobby of his? At this point, it was just a hobby because my father's from Thailand. So um, he was oh. born raised in Thailand. He actually landed in California at the age of 19, learned English, ended up in West Virginia, met my mom and then my sister and I came, but in Thailand, uh, he had a band. Uh, when he was in his teens, uh, called uh, F Sharp Minor, because um, his middle name is Minor. So, oh, uh, that's cool. It kind of yeah. really ties in musically there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, they they covered like Beatles and Bread and you know all that stuff, and it was it's, it was pretty cool. I, my first song was uh, that, that I learned was um, a Beatles song, you know. So it was. You know, Which was, Beatles song, if you don't mind me asking? Jojo was a man who thought it was all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's a good one for a kid it's, to learn. <laughs> it's good, right? Lyrically, at least. Yeah, exactly. I, was, I didn't know what I was singing, but. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's awesome. So guitar was your first instrument. Yeah, guitar was my first instrument. Um, and then, you know, uh, piano picked up, you know, just uh, started. I taught myself pretty much everything. You know, uh, I didn't take. Uh, lessons my father taught me how to play the basic chords mm -hmm. and then I, with it and then just you know kept moving with it and so but I never went to school and you know I just learned it by ear everything I heard I played by ear and, and things like that so did, uh, did you start like a band in, in school or did you even did you play yeah, the school well, band at all or no uh, yeah, I mean, I started a band when I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. We did Battle of the Bands, you know, when, uh, in West Virginia. You know, we had. Okay. Um, you know, it was at the time it was, you know, uh, Green Day and Nirvana and, sure. and was a 90s kid. Right. You know, so uh -huh. like, you know, I'm, uh, it, it's like, uh, you know, uh, Pearl Jam and, you know, just these just these big top 90s um, uh, bands that we were just covering. And um, it was cool. You know, it only lasted for a little bit because we ended up he my father ended up moving me to New Jersey uh okay. later later on and that's how and that's where i am now in new jersey but um so and then when i got here i met some people that were into you know, creating music and recording with studios and things like that so that's how i got into actually recording what i was doing rather than just playing in bands and garages and stuff like that interesting yeah because i mean jersey is a big music scene there a lot of bands came out of, of jersey at least you know yeah yeah um, so how old were you when you moved into Jersey and, and how did you get in? Like, it was just meeting people and kind of picking up producing and recording. 
Yeah, so um, after, so I was about 17 turning 18 years old. So after I was done with school, uh, we came to New Jersey and uh, I was out here and um, ran into some people that were in some music scenes. I mean, um, you know, at the time, there were no cell phones. There were, there were just beepers maybe just coming out at the time. <laughs> so sure. uh, oh, Pager any, code, which pager is something... Code. Seven, which seven, is something seven. I never learned because yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so uh you know a 911 that means hurry up give me a call right or, or my parents please. number <laughs> yeah. get exactly. your ass home <laughs> exactly um so it was like you know we just getting in the car and 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 going to the mall going to the flea market going to and I mean, I was hanging around the same people as Bob and I mean Silent Bob and, and Jay and you know things like that like yeah. wow that's where it was hung out at the mall you hung out at the flea market you hung out sure. they record they video to, uh they filmed the movie at uh the flea market route 18 flea market back in the day for that movie uh mall rats and um so yeah it was it was good it's um uh you know that's how you really met people was just getting out there so it was just much of me and my friends going out meeting people and just connecting that way and like really uh you know face to face rather than like this new age now where you can socially connect, you know, on social media and things. So, um, you know, just sure. get people and got to know the, the right crew, you know, was, uh, you know, you just find people that were battle rapping or people that are playing guitar on the side of the street or, you know, people in the mall. I mean, you really can tell who's a musician and who's not back in the day. You know, I had the long hair, you know, look, <laughs> like, you know, zap, you know, like, right. you know, I was like Jared Leto. He was like my dude. Like I was like, oh, okay. I want to be like Jared Leto with the long hair and you know whatever that I played in a band. It's like, oh God, Jared Leto is in a band. Like you know, it's it uh -huh. awesome. Now he's doing really great things, you know, with his music too. So sure, wow, that's you know? really that's really awesome. And then so did producing and um, like recording kind of come become like your main focus, or instead Not of like pursuing no. like a band well yeah not at the uh not at the time like at the when i first started out it was like doing some solo stuff um uh, recording with some of the people that i started with in new jersey uh there was a hip-hop crew with some r b and then there was some pop and rock stuff uh but it was a lot of hip-hop and r b uh so i so I ventured into doing some of the R and B stuff because I was a vocalist. I wasn't a rapper. So, um, but so I was doing that and I was learning how to sing in the booth, record, keeping the timing and things like that. So I trained a lot uh, doing that. But um, after two years living in New Jersey, um, I picked up, I saw, I saw a commercial uh, about a guy named Lou Perlman. He owned Transcontinental Records uh, mm -hmm. and he, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears and all this sure. stuff. So I saw a commercial and I was like, you know what? One day I'm going to meet them guys. I'm going to go down and I'm going to, I'm going to find them and I'm going to do my thing. Um, one evening, a couple of buddies of mine, um, we had a few drinks. We ended up at a diner and we said, we're just going to go to Florida. So we went to the airport, bought some tickets, went to Florida. I was there for a week, met some people. I loved it. When I flew back two months later, I moved to there. Really? Was yes. it because like, were you trying to, I mean, they, they all came kind of from that Disney channel, yeah. like, uh, they were, we're in yeah. Orlando, Florida. Exactly. Sure. So is that where you're going to kind of be like, okay, well, this guy has discovered the yep. biggest acts right now in, in music. I want to get, try to get there and figure it out. Absolutely. So what wow. I did, was, like I say, I said, like a month or maybe a month and a half earlier, I was like, I'm going to go find that guy one day. And so happened, we ended up being in Florida just because we had a couple of drinks. And we said, let's jump on a plane and go to Florida. We ended up in Orlando. <laughs> that was where it was. We hung out and stayed with some really cool people. And I was like, you know what? I'm going back. You know, I moved there. I picked up a phone. I rented an apartment. I put all, I, I ordered a truck, told him to pack all my stuff and drive it down. I went to the airport, flew there, got off the plane. Then I sat for two and a half hours because I didn't know what I was going to do because my apartment <laughs> wasn't ready yet. Right. And I didn't have my car because it was being shipped. So I had to go rent a car. So then I drove to those people that we met that week that I went there for vacation just with my buddies and mm -hmm. they let, let me crash with them until my apartment was ready. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. Oh my gosh. Well, did you ever... And then when you're there, you're like, okay, I'm here. Yeah. Now what? Like, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? There, like, <laughs> one of the guys worked at Universal Studios. So oh. I was 
He's like, yo, come work for Universal. Everybody worked for Universal Studios. Everybody worked for Disney, Disney, right? Sure. You know, so that's who the entertainment was. So that's where I went. I applied. I started getting a job at Universal. I played characters. I played Aladdin for at Disney. I played Digital Scissor Hands. You know, really? I did. Really? You, were the, you got to be the guy that was kind of taking pictures of people and stuff. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. I was on the float as well, you know, like you're no going way. Through, like, things like, yeah, it was like, one of many because, you know, right. every, every 30 minutes you swap somebody out, we're wearing the same outfits and stuff. So sure. But to be able to like, so how did you get even get into that role? I mean, that sounds like some, like me personally, if I was like, okay, I'm going to go down, I'm going to apply to universal studios. And they're not going to be like, you know, like you yeah. look like oh, you have the Aladdin look, just go right. on the float. I'm sure you have to do some sort of audition process, right? To make it improve, kind of prove yourself. Right. One, you put in your application that you're a singer, you're an actor. Okay. And um, I already had the long hair, natural. <laughs> okay, sure. Wig. So that's what really put me in front of the line because I didn't have to wear a wig. Um, you know, a lot thinner back then. So <laughs> <laughs> 19 years As old. As we all are. We're. <laughs> you know? so, um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I worked my way up to it you know i worked at um i mean i did like the the, the halloween fright fest and the scares you know so you would dress up as zombies and go scare people that must have been fun <laughs> things like yeah so but you weren't allowed to touch people but you were just you know allowed to scare them at the time it was like some big thing if you touch them you get sued and stuff i don't know but um <laughs> i'm sure now but, if you scare them it gets sued it's yeah yeah <laughs> right aggressively built you know you right. can't do anymore but um progressively but but um you know and then uh, one day i was singing in the hallway after i was getting done like i was working there for maybe three weeks i mean this is just it's incredible how it all just panned out i was working there three weeks i was taking off my makeup in the bathroom and whatever i was getting out i was walking to my car uh, i'm singing in the hallway and uh, all of a sudden, two girls in front of me, I'll never forget their names, Becky and Mo. She, they both turned around and said, hey, I'm Becky, I'm Mo. You, you sing? I was like, yeah, I sing. I was like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, we sing too. We're actually going to this party tonight. You want to go? I was like, sure. I was like, he's like it's, it's Robert Jacquez. He's like the choreographer for like NSYNC, Britney Spears and everything. I was like, oh, sure, let's go. So wow. I ended up going there, a few drinks. I woke up on his couch the next morning. <laughs> oh man nobody Becky Mo's nowhere to be found it's just me I woke up I look up it's Robert Jacquez uh Jared and uh, Melissa La Rochelle right so they're standing above me and I'm and I'm still great friends with Melissa now today um but they wake I wake up and they were just like you know who's this boy on my couch right sure um, they're like well we have to go pick up our friend um uh from the airport you want to go <laughs> i was like sure because i had a wow car. everybody jump in my car let's just all go instead of so, get out of my house what are you doing here they're like hey why don't you, let's head you to the airport <laughs> we gotta go pick up monica monica she's moving from chicago because uh chris from nsync just uh broke up with her because he didn't want she was still a virgin at the time and didn't want to I don't oh, know if sure. we, I didn't know. I don't know if we're allowed to say this. But, we, yeah, uh, dude, you can say whatever you want, and, <laughs> and please go into detail on this because this is very fascinating. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was still a virgin. She didn't want to give it up, so Chris broke up with her. So she moved out of Chicago and moved, and we and I went and picked her up in the airport with Robert Jacques. Um, she went on to uh, so we went back, and I ended up. Long story short, I ended up being Robert's um, uh, roommate, uh, and I got to, and he worked with Lou Pearlman. Diva Records, Johnny Wright, Donna Wright. I ended up going into that whole scene and I ended up meeting the same people that I wanted to go there and meet within the first matter of two, like month or two that I moved to Orlando. It was pretty, it was pretty surreal. Yeah. That is so crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. So like, what a, like a vision board type story. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I want to meet these people. I'm just going to <laughs> throw it all away or not throw it all away but i'm just gonna really go for it i'm gonna move to orlando and do yeah. this and yeah. wow so you meet these people and then are you kind of in their click now and is that how you kind of got into like the producing and and like yes i was i was put in boy bands um <laughs> oh, really i was thrown around <laughs> you know so it was uh it was cool you know i mean i was in a one band a boy band called stilo i was in a i was in a spanish group at one point and i'm not even spanish like they were just <laughs> everywhere <laughs> you know, I worked with 
Henson, great choreographer. I mean, we worked with a lot of different people, but Donna Wright, I was with Wright, Diva Records, uh, Wright Stuff Management. Um, she had um, uh, she had Backstreet Boys um, and, uh, uh, and and Pink. And wow. her husband, her ex husband Johnny Wright, had NSYNC and Britney Spears. So that's what they really that's what it was. But I was they were with, like the power power couple of the pop it, scene in the oh, early two thousands. They started New Kids on the Block. They were the right stuff. Donna Wright, Johnny Wright, the right stuff. They oh invented my gosh. boy band. They started boy bands. Yeah, they're like they, they're like forever. Yeah, Johnny Wright is still Justin Timberlake's manager. You know? Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I mean, I I ended up. I mean, saying and, and clicking with, you know, I hung out with all of them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we would go out to shows. We would do like House of Blues and and um, uh, and uh, uh, all these different venues, live performances when there's like, uh, you know, 20 different opening acts. But then Eminem comes in, Mary J. Blige comes in, Mandy Moore was getting big, things like that. Uh, Mandy Moore was really big at one point. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, musically. <laughs> yeah. I candy. Mean, candy. Like- that was the jam. Yeah. And right. I think she recently put a record out, even like uh, after the whole, um, you know, this is us thing. I mean, she's always she's my favorite. Ro- yeah, yeah, my favorite role is her and Saved. Uh, that movie just, I still love that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And now she's on that popular show, This Is Us. Yeah, This Is Us. And I, right. like I said, I think she put a record out kind of recently. Know. She was doing I mean, something with that, and I'm like, whoa, like that's kind of cool because still doing. Stuff. A lot of people don't know she came from. From candy right. and that, that video right. and all that okay. so we would open up these shows and then uh and then we would all leave and go back to donna wright's mansion and i would cook her eggs at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning we're cooking eggs her boyfriend's cooking bacon and that was the whole thing it was like eggs and bacon for donna wright you know it was just like it was the best way to end but it was it was um it was getting i guess i guess you could say it was getting old because I was always an opening act. I was never signed. Nobody, they were signing people. They were signing bands. They were signing artists. And I was never the one that was getting signed. Right. And you were kind of tra- the, you were still was, grinding. You were like, okay, yeah. I'll get them and make eggs for people. I'll do yeah. you were like the, you know, almost, I don't want to say go for it, like, but you know, I was like the friend rather than, all right, well, you know, if I sign them away, I don't know, you know, it's like, yeah. Who's going to cook eggs for, for us. Yeah. <laughs> People are coming this way, and and I stayed loyal to Donna. I mean, I remember Tom Fallon. He uh, he came to me. He came to Donna one time. We were at um, uh, uh, one of these uh, Joey Fatone's Christmas party, and uh, Fall, uh, t- uh, he, t- Fallon came up to Donna and was like, "Yeah, I found a new boy. I think I'm going to bring him on." And he's like, "Jeremy's that kid over there," and it was me. She was like, "Ah ha ha, sure," you know, because I. Yeah. And, like, cause I was talking to him and, and, uh, but she knew that I was staying loyal. I could have went with him and went to Transcon and maybe it potentially got signed by Lou Perlman on Transcon records, but no, I stayed with Donna. I did that. Um, her daughter, Melissa, sorry about that. No, her, no daughter, her daughter, uh, Melissa was dating AJ from the Backstreet Boys at the time. So she was always, <laughs> he was always there. And, um, you know, so it was like, all right. So I stayed with that click for a long time, but after the period of, you know, s- you know, several years, you know, it was like, all right, well, I'm going back to Jersey. I, I, I've exhausted, you know, all of this. You know, the last person they signed was Pink. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, I hung out with her in Philly. We went to diners. We, we did so much. You know, we, we smoked so many blunts. blunts. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you're going, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, it was just, it's insane. But, you know, uh, went to her album release party for There You Go at the MTV Music Studios in New York. Wow. Where, uh, you know, we met Vitamin C and, you know, and, uh, you know, it was just, it was a great time. And that's when she first started and then she got big uh, and she was went with Donna Wright, but then something happened with an air a flight ticket or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the exact story, but she ended up firing Donna and then went on because of a plane issue. I don't know. I don't know. Vitamin but, C did? No, no, no. Pink. Oh, oh pink did. I was like, yeah. I thought you were saying vitamin C did. I'm like, no. well, she only had one hit. So maybe that yeah. wasn't her best decision. <laughs> yeah. I actually went with vitamin. I was there with vitamin C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, uh, but Pink was performing. And then later on, as they were, you know, they progressed and she was getting bigger because, you know, she just dropped her album. There You Go was her number one smash, her first single. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, uh, uh, but something happened where she went to the airport 
Donna was supposed to have a ticket ready or her team was supposed to have a ticket. Flight information wasn't good and or something. And then she was like, all right, well, you're fired. So sure. I'm just, okay. I'm just, just spilling things, man. I, don't know. I, I <laughs> love been, this. Been, been, <laughs> been, been decades, man. <laughs> okay. Well, so then you said you moved that, back to Jersey. Yeah, I moved back to Jersey and I was like, all right, well, now I'm going to start focusing on writing stuff for myself, uh, you know, uh, start recording. But I ended up, I had, I had a child. I was going to move to uh, California, but I had my, I had my first, my first child, my daughter, Veronica. Um, so I stayed in New Jersey. So I, okay. I hustled it, never moved to California. I just stayed here, hustled it and, uh, and did what I needed to do. And, um, but yeah, so I just, Worked my way through the scenes, you know, we went to uh, BMI parties, went to, uh, you know, things like that. Just, you know, musical scenes, uh, bars, watched bands. And as as time grew, you know, cell phones and social media, things like that. But, you know, I was also a DJ. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so I did that as well, you know, uh, spinning, spinning records, meeting people that way at, at, at clubs and bars. And um, and yeah, so it led me to uh, meeting uh, my current producing partner uh, about 12 years ago that's when I started hardcore now into uh, writing and producing and and that's when the professional professional career started you know? okay yeah. so you, is that when you kind of so when does uh, sound entertainment was that what started with with your friend uh, but my friend uh, his name is Cooper Anderson we started uh -huh. pop records uh, oh, okay Rock was was the first um, so yeah, I was DJing a, a, a a party uh he came up and said hey you want to play the cd i produced like a song i produced this one cds were uh playing kids <laughs> um uh so yeah so so i played it and i was like oh this is pretty dope i was like yeah i write too he's like i'm a producer so i was like all right i we exchanged numbers and i went to his uh studio and then uh you know it's, that's where it started and you know uh, eventually we just became partners we started up pop rocks records and you know started banging out tunes and uh you know uh, working with the right people and I mean, he already worked with the right people as well so I sort of like fell into some really good things so yeah yeah well tell me about these really good things because I did see that you you know two-time Grammy you're balloted on the Grammys like I love the stories I was watching on your Instagram of like you at the Grammys like Billie uh -huh. Eilish right in front of you you know like John Legend playing like yeah, those yeah. must have been such like surreal experiences like like when you say you got your balloted, like was that for a song that you wrote or you or you produced? Yeah, so a song that I wrote and produced. Oh um, wow, okay. Yeah, so um, there's well, there's there's two. The ones that we were balloted for is one I remade a James Brown song. I, I'm actually another writing partner and another business partner that I have is uh, Miss uh, Deanna Brown Thomas. She is the daughter of soul legend James Brown. That's uh, incredible we rewrote her dad's song get up off of that thing and uh uh we released it uh two years ago or yeah two years ago on uh on his birthday on james brown's birthday may 5th wow. uh, that ended up getting onto the first round ballot of the grammys mm -hmm. uh, which is great it didn't make it to nominations but you know we got the consideration and uh, get, that, yeah that's so yeah. cool and to get the validation from you know his his family and that family. legacy to you yeah. know be able to do that that must have been such a validating moment for you no absolutely like if you look up get up off of that thing it's you know it says who owns it is dd yama and deanna like he, jane mr brown left the song to them you know what i mean like so, amazing. Have, so we got to do that and um we're working with some some other um Pro, you know prospects of landing us in television commercials and things like that but um and then the second song i wrote for a specific movie uh i wrote and produced and uh that made it on to uh the uh the first round uh, grammy ballot this year and also made uh the first round uh, uh consideration ballot for the oscars too so, wow yeah so it was pretty cool so we we made the top 105 list this is dope so that is so sad. what a cool moment but you know it's you know people listen to it and they considered it so they had you know that's was, cool and was that a similar was that a like tell me about the, that that second song uh that's it was an it's an anti-bully song it's sort of like a power ballad um okay. you know, had some you know big climax you know bridges and things like that and um and it was uh why why anti-bully song is about you know 
come uh, realizing that you can be better. You don't have to be, you know, stuck in your old ways and, you know, you don't have to be the person you used to be. You can be somewhere better once you find the answer. And that's the name of the song is the answers. Um, and then I ended up getting my daughter and uh, nine, eight of her classmates uh, to do a children's choir uh, for the ending. And then they started singing on it. So it's pretty cool. So she's actually uh, Grammy and Oscar balladed to She's oh, 10. Wow. Okay. So that most recent song that you put out is the, is, is the song that, that achieved a lot of that, uh, yeah. that success. Yeah. 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 So wow. pop, pop, pop rocks records, like again, moving back 12 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, uh, Cooper Anderson. So he worked for Ken Lewis. Ken Lewis is just like this mega big deal in the music industry that everybody goes to to mix songs. Kanye's on a speed dial. Like everybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> wow, so, yeah. like, I walk in a situation where, you know, John Legend and Kanye West plaques are already on Cooper's wall, right? So it's like, all right, cool. So now we're in a situation where it's Ken Lewis and his partner Brent, and then it's Cooper Anderson and me. So it was for a long time. Like it was, you know, so they would give us some work you know, things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken give Cooper some work and things because he worked under uh, Ken Lewis. But uh, long story short, um, got the project where um, there was a song that needed a kick and a snare. That was a sample. They needed to re uh, that needed to be redone that uh, that can clear. Um, so uh, what Cooper did and uh, brought it in and hit a kick and hit a snare brought it in, mixed it up and tuned it up, uh, sent it back and it got placed into the song. A year later, it hit a commercial, a year and a half later, it won Song of the Year. That song is We Are Young by Fun. So, oh, wow. So Pop Rocks Records essentially became a Grammy winning production company. So, sure. Oh my gosh. It, and that yeah. was, was that was like an after, like, cause, cause that Fun record came out, what, 2010 that, or? That's Exactly. That's that was first. That was our first. When I first met him, that's what we led into. You know what I mean? Oh. So that's what, that's what we were first going into. So we, um, yeah. So it was pretty cool. It was a it was a pretty big deal that uh, he got on that record. Uh -huh. uh, he he created the sounds for the kick and the snare, and uh, you know, business partner of Pop Rocks Records. You know, he we we're we we're a Grammy winning production company. You know what I mean? So it was that's it was so cool. cool. Yeah, that yeah. is so cool. And that song is still, I, I mean, everybody, Nate Ru it was, yeah, it's crazy because Nate Roos really went into like, he had that huge hit with pink going back yeah. to, you know, the pink connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Jack Antonoff, but you would, I would have never guessed if you looked at fun yeah. and you saw the success of Nate Roos in the beginning, I didn't realize how talented, you know, he was. Cause I mean, right. his band bleachers is dope, but it's nothing like what, what he's doing with Taylor Swift. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah no, just sure. crazy. But wow, and then I did see that you you have uh, what's what's your school of sound? Is that a, a part of is that a, a company or yeah. something that you you produce, or is that all kind of tied in with the answers? Well, no. So school of sound is just a a, a music school that I founded that I, that teaches music to kids. I love that. <laughs> and was yeah, that so because of your you know having kids yourself and wanting them encouraging them to play? Yeah. So I mean, I I just know that. I'm not, uh, not to be cliche or be too Whitney, but children are the future, right? So sure. they're they're going to lead us uh, to the promised land or lead us to the black hole, like you know. So we're going to try to teach them along the way. Uh, so you know, my daughter picked up the guitar really fast, and uh, she, you know, she learned. She's ten years old, and she can play like very, very well. You know, she can always <laughs> get better, but you know, she's she's done very well. So you know, I, I mean, I found it in school. It's what it's meant for school of sounds so we well, i want to teach you how to record sounds so that's what it's pretty much is so i want to oh. come in you how to produce so there's so many kids out there that know how to play i don't want to teach guitar i don't want to teach piano i will but i want to teach you how to put like there's so many kids out there that already know how to do that so right. i want to bring those kids in here and put their talent to work and say hey this is how you can actually do something with your music now rather than playing just in your garage or become 30 years old one day and you're an accountant never knowing what to do with your music you know? <laughs> right right this is a school for you to come learn how to re record write produce mix master and release your own music yeah so that is so cool yeah because i think that's half the battle for people i mean yeah. they they know how to play a song or they'll write a song in their bedroom and then it's like yeah. what do i do like do i just buy this like 
you know, blue Yeti mic and try to sing into <laughs> it and into garage band. But I mean, what a difference it makes if you kind of know the, the yeah, steps perhaps. and, and a lot of people probably don't know the steps of, okay, now I have my USB mic song and how do I get that on Spotify yeah. or how do I, how do I get to that next level? And, and yeah. I love that you're teaching that. Yeah. And, and there's, there's so many, there's so many things that you have to know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things in this industry that nobody tells you mm -hmm. that you're going to miss. And if you miss some of those steps, you're just going to get left behind. So, and I, and I feel like it's kind of a gatekeeper thing. I mean, yeah. like, like, it, a lot of people know how to do it, but they're like, I don't yeah. know if I want to tell people how to do it because then they're a competition of mine. You know what I mean? And like right. the fact that you're breaking that boundary and just being like, no, this is how you do it. Yeah. I've achieved success and <laughs> I want to show you how to achieve success. Yeah. I think that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's just where the school of sound came in. Sound entertainment came later after, um, you know, Pop Rocks records still remains. I still, you know, we, he, you know, I, um, you know, we still work together, but mm -hmm. we didn't, we weren't um, uh, working on every single thing at the same time. Like I ventured off in some solo things. He ventured off in solo things. I created sound entertainment. He has his, um, you know, uh, uh, a platinum mixing uh, dot com as well. Uh, so it's like, you know, we, we, we ventured off and did our own things, but um, eventually came back together once I had some projects and, um, and got him involved with me doing some of these songs that I'm doing for movies now. So it went from me trying to be this pop artist with Transcon and Rue Perlman to now me playing and trying to write my own songs to producing for artists and uh, trying to land some, you know, some songs with some, some, some record deals or whatever the case. And then now into um, writing soundtrack, reading, reading uh, scripts and writing music specifically for um, motion pictures film. So. Oh, yeah. wow. So that's but what yeah, you're kind of doing they, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mainly that's what. So you know, do you enjoy that? Like that must be a totally different muscle to kind of exercise when it comes to that. That's the, my favorite thing in the world. Like there's really? nothing. I'm, I'm so glad I am where I'm at today because, you know, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a session. You come in here, record in the booth and, you know, I'll record you and mix it up and send you out. I don't care. You know, that's great. That's all. But what I want to do is I want to write songs. You know, I want to write songs specifically for things. I want it to be for something. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I get a script and I get scripts all the time and I'm reading the script and I'm like, all right, well, I think there's a song that goes right there. Oh, that's not all. Oh, this will go perfect right here. I'm going to write a song specifically for that. So, um, you know, there's, there's been about, I'd say in the last two years, I've written 22 songs for four or five movies um so it's like you know it's 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 great you know I'm, and so it's it's still in process like one movie just wrapped um another movie is 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 has been wrapped um one of them was already in the movie that one already got recognized um one oh, which one is that if you don't mind me asking uh max winslow in the house of secrets oh that's, cool that's the one that has the answers that when that got the oscar uh oh, okay sure sure for, okay yeah um and then one there's a, a musical movie, sort of like High School Musical, uh, uh -huh. or like mixed with um, The Greatest Showman, uh, going that's going to be filmed this summer that I wrote seven songs for, uh, wow. that I'm that I co-produced, that I'm that I'm that I'm. So I did seven songs, and uh, Melissa Sheridan, she's also uh, uh, the uh, the other producer that's that's going in. Uh, she did uh, eight songs that we wrote, um, and then uh, her husband Andy and uh, my. My, produ my producer partner Cooper um, are are involved in, so we're doing that whole soundtrack, and it's going to be great to see for the first time my songs being sung on the big screen, not just played in the background. You know, that's right? Little, oh, um, so that's actually a, they're going to be the songs in the film. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow, yeah. that's going to be such a cool moment. Yeah. Oh absolutely. my, that's insane. That's so awesome, man. I'm, that's that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That one is cool. And well, then, how, uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. No, I was just saying, like, so many different, you know, so many movies that come in, I'll get a script, and uh, right now there's a war movie that's going on, that's what I was, uh, I think, talking to your wife before, um, there's a movie that's uh, being um, 
that I'm reading the script for. So that's why I had, I had a guitarist in here before this interview and I had to rush him out. Oh, I was like, no, you didn't have go. to. I'm so sorry, dude. It's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> I was like, little did I know I had a little bit more time. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Still. Um, yeah, but okay, that, that's so cool. And then how will, I mean, with, with your job now, did COVID really affect it aside from like being the most horrible thing ever, but I mean, right. like, for your work, were you already getting, were you ever, you, were you already able to kind of work from home and kind of do all this regardless of that? Yeah. I mean, I've always worked from home, you know, I have my, my studio. Um, and, uh, like I have, I also own, like when I said I was a DJ, you know, for a long time, I started that business. So I, I had a DJ, I had DJs, trivia, bingo, karaoke. Like I had a company oh. that entertainment to bars and restaurants. That's rad. So, you know, I'd have like 20 or 20 venues per week that I'd send guys out and just go out there and host. Uh, and then that all stopped, which sure. really hurt those guys. Um, fortunately, I was still able to still do my music because, you know, I email to California. I don't go to there. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. I mean, I usually go to California two or three times a year, not last year or this year yet because mm -hmm. of COVID. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know you like we're doing now like you know you we get on we can have writing sessions via zoom you know um you know i can record you if you wanted to i mean there's programs where i can connect to your computer right now and i can control the record button and then you can sing in that microphone and we'll make a song that's like, so crazy <laughs> what so, a, like it, what, it's so nuts to me to think like 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 zoom wasn't even like a, yeah. a, a word that most people knew all right, like, you know, a two a year and a half ago, I, I knew because my wife's work, she's always worked remotely and they've always used it. And mm -hmm. my biggest thing is, is I, I just don't see how Skype missed the mark, man. Right. <laughs> they, oh. they choked. <laughs> yeah, <I> choked. <laughs> it's so well, true. But it's just... uh, so you got it. So right now you've, you've, you've been working on a, a new film. Yeah. This war movie. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a sort of a Johnny Cash hurts. Oh, type sure. Of feel. You know, Rad. it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it sort of kind these are the things that I come up with, you know, they can like them, they can not like them. Um, but, you know, there's like some scenes in there where, you know, there's a montage where it looks back on the actor's life, the character's life, uh, you know, which he has PTSD. He's, he's like a bum. He's outside taking a bath you know, in, in water that's outside by the sewer and stuff like whatever, you know, um, sure. but uh, so, or like there's this war part, you know how you see them in war movies uh, and it may be a prime example is even the uh, guarding the galaxy or uh, with Chris Pratt or the, in the Avengers mm -hmm. where there's a big action scene and it's just a really slow, beautiful ballad song playing. Oh, but it's like sure. so much yeah. going uh -huh. on. Uh huh i was going with it you know so i was like all right well i'm gonna do something like real johnny cash slow guitar you know low vocal type thing and uh really like a balladish but get you know, get get bigger in the choruses but but still keep that feel with the plucking of the guitar and things like that so um yeah so i mean it, it was just give that feel uh you know i as you have to read the script you gotta see the moving things yeah but, well, I you can't know, wait till the film comes out with your songs in, man. Yeah. That sucks. And, I just, and then <laughs> I don't, I just have this song. So <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy, for, for okay, waiting. No, that's all right. So thank sorry. Um, right. And, and, and having this interview and, and telling me all about your life story. You've, this has just been so much fun. Uh, I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, aspiring artists, I like to say is just surround yourself with the right people. Um, you know, if you're, I can't express it enough. If you want to be a musician, all right, let's say you want to be, let's see, you want to be a basketball player. Mm -hmm. Don't go out to the mall and hang out, go to the basketball court, play basketball. Right. If you want to be a skater, don't go play, pick up basketball, go to the skate park and be a skater you want to be a musician go to the studio go hang out at the you know go to cafes go to uh you know different sections well you know if, if, if surround yourself with the people that you want to be around and in the, in the industry that you want to be in you know mm -hmm. so um you know just if you're going to do it 
you got to be all in because nobody else is going to do it for you. And it's the, it's the hardest, the hardest industry to break into. Everybody with a cell phone is a producer. Bring me the best word.